Are you racing an Ironman or 70.3 this season and it's your first time and you're a little uncertain about how the bike aid stations work? Well, in this video, I'll talk through all you need to know about where they'll be, what they'll serve, and more importantly, how to get into them and out of them with your fuel safely and quickly as possible. And at the end, I'll talk a little bit about how you should incorporate aid stations into your overall nutrition strategy. So let's get to it. So where will you find the aid stations on your Ironman course? This is key information and you'll find this in the athlete guide where on the bike course page, it will show you exactly where it is on the map, but also very it'll make it easier for you. It will give you a look, it was a distance indicator. So is that 30 kilometers? Is that seven kilometers? Key information for you to write down and know. What will you find when you get to that, those aid stations? This graphic on the screen now shows a typical flow of an Ironman aid station. Some key things to note, there's trash at the beginning and at the end. There's also a toilet at the very end. And in between, this is how the flow works with volunteers manning each of these stations. It typically goes water, ESO, and that will vary country by country, American mortal hydration, Europe precision hydration. They will have gels, bars, bananas, ESO again, and then water. And that flow is important because it will impact how you actually execute your sort of your aid station drive through, which we're going to talk through the seven key things you need to know to get through that aid station safely, quickly and getting the fuel on board. How to aid station like a pro for me. The seven things you need to be aware of when you're, um, when you're going through an aid station. I use the acronym STATION to remind myself of them. S stands for slow down. Aid stations are to be done in a controlled fashion. If you go through at 100 miles an hour and don't slow yourself down, you will actually be a danger to other cyclists, to yourself, and you will not be able to grab the food you require. So take it easy. T stands for tell others, and um, this thing, uh, applies to your cyclists around yourself, the volunteers. So start communicating if you're going into an aid station that you're going in. I'm going to aid station, I'm going to aid station, indicate so therefore you're not suddenly veering across other cyclists who also might be going to the same aid station and causing the danger. Be vocal, communicate, tell others. A stands for being aware. In an aid station, typically there's not only cyclists moving in, but there's people who will have dropped bottles, there will be gel wrappers, there'll be all sorts of debris around just by the nature of the aid station. So you need to be very much aware of what's on the floor, other riders around you, where the volunteers are standing, etc. So be aware. T stands for trash, and this goes back to our part where I said, if you look at the flow of the aid station, there's trash areas at the beginning and end of the, the, the flow. That is the only place you can drop off and chuck uh, empty bottles. You can um, drop wrappers without fear of getting disqualified. If you do that and, and on, the, on the race course outside these trash zones, you will get a DQ. So for me, when I'm coming in, I'll have made sure I've emptied whatever bottle I'm going to discard when I come to the first trash station. I chuck it and I'm gone. I stands for interact. When you are coming, you've, you've managed to slow yourself down, you know what you're going to get, you need to get a new bottle of water. So you start talking to the, uh, the volunteer, I'm coming to you, point, make eye contact, because then they'll know to hold that bottle for you and not offer it to someone else. And you slow down, grab the bottle, be in control and say thank you. These volunteers are giving up their time, it's important that we show them a bit of love. O stands for obtain, and we've talked about that, is when you're get, making sure that you're coming in in a slow manner, you've made eye contact with the, a volunteer, you know what you're going to get, you grab the bottle and make sure you've got a good grab on it, and put it into the bottle cage, or you fill up your front hydration um, unit, whatever you're using, but O is make sure you obtain it and you get it onto the bike securely. 
N stands for notify. That's again, you've got your bottle, you've, got, you've, you've picked up what you needed, and now you're telling others you're coming back into the main flow of the race. Coming out, coming out, as I said, again, you're not suddenly veering out in front of someone and then causing an accident. And you're back onto the race. So how do you build aid stations into your nutrition strategy? Now there's a lot to unpack here, but at a very high level, you need to be take advantage of the aid stations on course that you're not trying to travel with all the fuel you might need for your race day, because that's a lot of bottles, that's a lot of fuel, and it will be cumbersome and it will slow you down. The aid stations are for you to take advantage. So for me, I work out a self-sufficient strategy that I can get to at least two aid stations before I need to take something on board. So if I do miss an aid station because I'm cycling through it, I'm not under any pressure. Um, but I'll know what's coming up. I'll have planned to empty a certain bottle by a certain distance, etc. And it'll all be built into my nutrition strategy. And therefore the aid stations help me get to my goal. I cover this a little bit more in the video below. But um, hopefully that was useful. I hope you have a great race day um, coming up and that you give us a thumbs up and you subscribe for more great triathlon content.